We are Luca and Sara. For the past three years, we have been living and traveling in our old truck camper, driving from Alaska to Argentina. When the pandemic kicked off, the lives of many travelers, van lifers, overlanders changed. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to Overlanders Quarantales, our third episode. This is a YouTube series where we share stories of travelers, overlanders from all around the world during this pandemic. We will talk with them and we will see some of them uh, have been able to fly back home. Uh, some of them uh, are still in foreign countries. Uh, we will see how they deal with all this pandemic. Uh, Currently, we are still stuck in Argentina, in Patagonia, confined to the same campground. Now it's day 30 forever, <laughs> 35, so it's more than one month. But we are, we don't know all these people personally. We don't know all these travelers personally, but we know that we are part of a big community and we have each other's back. So I think this is a really important message that we stay together, we stick together stronger than ever. Now let's check our guests for today's episode. Let's go! Hi everyone, we're from Overlanding Sofia. I'm Cheska. And I'm Ben. And this is Sofia, our sprinter van. We were actually traveling through Portugal when the pandemic really started to escalate. And um, we were coming towards the end of our trip anyway, but our ferry back home is actually from Spain. And as you all know, things escalated in Italy and Spain very quickly. I mean, things are changing like hourly. So we decided to leave Portugal early and head into Spain to get our ferry back. But pretty much as soon as we made that decision, our ferry got cancelled, yeah. didn't it? <laughs> The same day that our ferry got cancelled, Spain also announced that they were going to be going into lockdown and we didn't really want to be stuck in Spain during the lockdown, which meant that our only option was to drive 2,000 kilometres through Spain and France and try and get the Eurotunnel back to the UK, which yeah. is exactly what we did. Get out of Spain is our priority now. It looks like everyone else is doing the same. Loads of people turned up last night. We uh, put in about, yeah, was it 14? It was a 14 and a half hour drive. 14 and a half hour drive all the way from Salamanca in Spain all the way up to Calais. Calais yeah. And it was an absolutely mental few hours. But we made it back pretty uneventfully. We managed to avoid the border closures <coughs> in Spain and France by about a day. So we made it back just in the nick of time. But yeah, we had to make some quick decisions, didn't we? In yeah. the space of like. 12 hours we've gone from five months of slow traveling to <laughs> yeah 24 hours of manic racing through three different countries just to get back yeah. so we thought that it'd be best for us to head back to our home country where we don't have to worry about uh, medical insurance or anything like that whereas we've got the nhs and things so you know worst comes to worst we would be better to be yeah it'd sort of be better to be yeah back home especially like given the uncertainty of it and how who knows how long this is going to last but now that we're back in the uk we are lucky enough um to be parked up on cheska's mum's drive which is an absolute godsend because we wouldn't know where we were going to be able to park in the uk really even like when it's not a pandemic the uk is not very motorhome camper van friendly as it is never mind when there's a pandemic going on exactly, like there's, yeah. we've heard a lot of horror stories um, yeah, so I say we're part of on the drive. We're lucky enough we have fresh water, pop inside for showers. Um, we've got a uh, hookup, electric hookup. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, it's just a really nice uh, posh campsite for us. Yeah, we're really grateful to have the space and we're very lucky that it worked out as it did. But to keep ourselves busy, I guess we've been planning future trips, <laughs> we've been doing um, bits of work. Been learning Spanish, you've been learning the guitar, I mean. Yes, badly. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just a strange feeling not be able to go out and explore like we have been doing for you know the last sort of five, six months. But it's not forever. Um so you know, eventually things will slowly get back to normal and we can carry on our adventures, but for now. For now it's the right thing to do to stay put on your mum's driveway. Yeah. So from a surprisingly sunny UK, I hope you are keeping well and sane. Bye. Bye guys. I'm here in my Land Rover in Tasmania when I'm actually supposed to be in my other Land Rover in South Africa. Um, and that's where I was just a few weeks ago. I am on a mission to drive from the most southern road in Australia, which is in Tasmania, um, to the most northern road in Europe. Um, project that I started in July of last year, so I drove all the way around Australia to Perth 
and then shipped from Perth to Cape Town and um, I met my um, vehicle in Cape Town in, um, in January and began preparing, um, doing some extra modifications and fixes before uh, heading up the east coast um, of Africa um, and in the end I actually only made it 10 hours up the coast before realizing that um, the coronavirus was something that was going to be quite significant and have a huge impact um, on myself and the world. So um, yeah, around uh, the 10th or 11th of March, I made the decision to turn around and leave my car in Cape Town with friends and um, fly back, uh, which I think was the right decision. Um, for me, uh, they stopped international flights uh, just a day and a half after I caught mine, so I was very lucky. Um, my heart goes out to all of the overlanders that um, were in more remote places or were not able to to leave. Um, it, it, it was, yeah, it's, it was hard to, to watch some of the stories from last week about um, people, people getting caught up. So um, it's a, a, a very different landscape for people who live this type of life and I don't know when it will change. Um, I don't know whether I'll be able to continue my dream or not or, or what. So I'm just sort of bunkering down here in Tasmania and trying to make the best of it. Um, trying not to dig into the savings that I have that, that took a, a, a lot of energy to accumulate for, for this dream. So like many of you, I, I, I um, empathize with you and the, your financial situations and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, that's, um, that's where I'm at right now and um, stay safe. Hi, my name is Dan. And I'm Arlene. We're known on YouTube and Instagram as Molly Mish. We're a family of five who have been traveling around the world since 2008. For the past 10 years, we traveled North America, all the way from Alaska down to the southern border to Mexico, first in an Airstream trailer, and as the kids got bigger, we actually downsized to a pop-up truck camper. A year and a half ago, we decided to build out our own Sprinter van and ship it over to Europe. And that's where we've been exploring Europe, parts of Asia, and in Africa. So as you guys can tell, we're currently not in our van. Since last February, we were in Morocco. Our plan this winter was to travel through Morocco, spend 90 days there, and make our way back into Europe and explore the United Kingdom this summer. However, because of the coronavirus pandemic, everything has changed. We were in Morocco for about five weeks before everything went to lockdown. So we decided to come back uh, to Europe. As Marlene's parents are Croatian, she and the kids have dual citizenship. Through them, I also have Croatian residency, which makes traveling around Europe a lot easier for us. We, our choices were either to stay in Morocco, come back to Europe, or the third option would have been going back to the US and leaving our van somewhere. Because we have residency here in Croatia, we have a place to be, we have healthcare coverage, we have everything that a normal European citizen does. It's actually more convenient for us to be here in Europe than to go back to the US. So it took probably about two weeks of negotiations while we're in Morocco, stuck at the border, for various European ambassadors to figure out a way for us to be evacuated. So as of two weeks ago, we were able to board a ferry in Morocco back to France, and we had to drive about uh, 1,800 miles. We chose to drive up through France, uh, and then through Germany, and through Austria, Slovenia, and back into Croatia, avoiding northern Italy because the outbreak there was really bad at the time. It's gotten a little bit better, but it is still definitely just like the rest of the world, not back to normal. Since we came back to Croatia, we had to be on 14 day quarantine. This is quarantine where we literally cannot leave this apartment. We had to bring everything from the van when we came back to Croatia into this apartment. And before we came back, we drove through Germany, which wasn't on as tight of lockdown as it is in the rest of Europe. We were able to go shopping. We bought as much food as we could physically fit into spaces that we had in the van so that we can come back to Croatia and not have to go outside. 
And since then, it's been about 12 days, we have not stepped our foot outside of this apartment. In two days, our official quarantine would end. We would join the rest of the citizens in Croatia to be in their nationwide lockdown, which only essential traveling is allowed. Things like walking your dog, uh, grocery shopping, and going to the hospital. Our plans are on hold. Uh, I guess we'll be in Croatia until through the summer is what I'm guessing. And after that, if everything starts to reopen, our plan is to repeat what our plan was for this winter. Our plan is to go back to Morocco, um, spend our three month max there if possible, and continue on to the Western side of Europe and explore the UK and Ireland. So effectively, everything that we had originally planned has been pushed back a full year. And that is assuming that things will go back to normal or at least as normal as possible in a year's time. We don't really know, just like the rest of you, anything is going to be the same. It's hard to imagine at this moment what next year might be like. But as people who travel like us, you have to be flexible. So this is just part of that flexibility that you have to have. We hope that in the next couple of months, things will loosen up. We hope that social distancing and isolation orders will continue to work to flatten that curve. Croatia is a country that relies heavily, heavily on tourism. So this is gonna be a tough year for the country. And the city of Split that we're in is as empty as we ever seen it. And right now we're at the beginning of spring and it typically would be a bustling place. We just don't see anybody but locals. This is Luca. <laughs> Say your name and how old you are. Hello, I'm Luca and I'm seven and, and it's two nights till my birthday. Oh yeah, he's gonna turn eight in two days. The day we get to leave quarantine. I'm Mila and I'm 10 years old. Do you have anything interesting to say about yourself? Mm. <laughs> What's your favorite animal? A sloth. A sloth. Okay, okay put me okay. down. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ava. I'm 13 and it's not my birthday. <laughs> not for a while. No. It's not my birthday. All right. Okay, so that's the five of us. We are in an apartment which is much, much bigger than what we're actually used to. Mm. So this is kind of a luxury for us. It may be small for a lot of other families of five, but the, as you can see, the kids are doing fine. We are making the best of it, so I hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy. And thanks, Luca and Sarah, for letting us share our story on your channel. I hope you guys are doing well and hope to meet you guys someday. Hi, guys. Hi guys. This is Sean. And Mercedes. From Together to the End of the Earth on Instagram. This is Blue Whale, our tiny home. Which we bought in New York and we left New York on the 14th of November and started driving south. We arrived here in El Salvador on the 5th of March and then we tried to leave El Salvador and continue on to Honduras on the 15th of March, but the borders were already closed due to coronavirus. Um, we've since been here for two weeks uh, in the quarantine. Fortunately, there isn't too many cases of coronavirus circulating through El Salvador, but unfortunately, um, and for everyone's benefit, we've got to deal with quite a strict quarantine to stop its spread. At the moment, one person at a time can leave a property and only go to buy food and medicine and the rest of the time you must remain on your property um, and there is quite strict implications if you do leave. So there is also a van going up and down the main road outside this property just reminding people to do the right thing and to take the correct preventions um, put in place um, to avoid the spread of coronavirus. Um, and from today, the president has released this um, information about his extending um, the self-quarantine for another 15 days and making sure that all the quarantine rules are more strict than before. So at least we'll be here till the end of um, April. We are very blessed to call this place a quarantine location and we're so grateful to the owner for letting us stay in his property during this difficult time. We know it's a very hard time for the whole world and it can get a little bit boring for all of us Overlanders since we are all used to being on the road and looking for new adventures. But we have been trying to make the most of it and looking at the bright side. So we've been doing some things like slacklining, cleaning the beach, swimming, cooking your recipes when we can find the ingredients. Knitting. And looking after a number of wild seabirds that live on the property. So there's a number of seabirds that have been rescued from the wild with broken wings and one of our jobs every day is feeding them and keeping them company so they can have a good quality of life. So guys, stay safe, stay strong, stay positive 
and hopefully we can see you down the road. Good vibes to everyone. Bye, Bye for, now. for now. We would like to thank uh, everybody who participated uh, in the, our video. You will find uh, all the links uh, or tags uh, in the description below. If you miss uh, the previous uh, episodes of uh, Overlander's uh, Quarantales, uh, please uh, click on the card up here and you will see the playlist. We will post soon other stories, other videos about travelers all around the world. We love you guys, we appreciate you, thank you for coming along with us. If you like the video, please uh, remember to give us a big thumbs up. And please consider to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well, if you haven't done already. See you on the next one. La, La vita, vita bella. bella. Life, Life is, is beautiful. beautiful. Ciao. Ciao.